Christ Jesus has triumphed o'er Satan and death, and now praise his name, I am free. Although he has gone to his Father's right hand, may others see Jesus in Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the Gospel in Sermon and Song, sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California. Released on a special network of selected radio stations in the United States, Canada, and overseas. Maintained by the prayerful, free will, tax deductible gifts of listeners. From both Old and New Testaments, the triumphal entrance of Christ speaks to us of both open gates and open hearts. It also speaks about closed doors and closed hearts, then and now. There's a song we always want to hear sung by Joe Erickson when these scriptures are read. Listen.
Praise and thank Thee, our Heavenly Father, for the vast multitude of born-again Christians who can say their hearts are open for the Lord Jesus Christ and for His Gospel. And pray that many out there in Radio Land whose hearts are closed may hear the hand beat upon their heart's door. To behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. And if heaven's door shall be opened, grant that those listening today may realize first their heart's door must be opened to let thee in, and then together we shall rejoice through all eternity. So bless the gospel in sermon and song today to this end. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Cross. 
cross of my Savior and the place where he knelt in prayer. Take me back to the old olive garden, to the place where he prayed for me. Where he poured out his soul for my trials of life will be nothing as I think of Gethsemane. Take me back to the old holy garden, to the place where we pray for me, where he poured out his soul for my power. Consider Jesus Christ that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, says the author of the book of Hebrews. Though he is the author and finisher of our faith, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, yet he had to endure the contradictions of people who claim to be waiting for the promised Messiah, and yet when he came, they rejected him. They were seemingly for him, but actually against him. Although salvation is free, there is a cost that's counted too high in forsaking sinful self-righteousness, separating oneself from the religious crowd, and joining up with the followers of Christ called Christians. Yes, that costs. But oh, how it pays. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays every day. It pays every step of the way. I wish all of you could sit down with us here in our Pasadena and Saskatoon offices and read the happy letters of our listeners who really know. Thanks to you who have made it possible for us to reach all these listeners on over 70 radio stations these many years. I don't need to tell you how to address your letters to us but uh, to the many who don't know it, let me inform you. It's Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California, 91102. And in Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K, 3K4. I'd better run through... That once more, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California, 91102. And in Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K, 3K4. <laughs>
And now, Associate Speaker Wilmar Gunderson brings today's message. Hello, this is Pastor Gunderson speaking with you today. I'd like to share from 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, starting from verse 18, some very well-known and loved verses there. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ rec reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. One thing you'll notice as you read through the Bible, and that is the central message of the scripture is really the cross. If we omit the preaching of the cross, we are omitting the message of reconciliation. We are then omitting the uh, message of sin's forgiveness or peace with God, if you will. We cannot omit the cross as we read scripture. This really becomes impossible. Uh, but yet, a number of people want to do that today. We read, for example, uh, it was true in the time of Paul where he writes to the Corinthians uh, that the cross became a stumbling block for the Jews. It became a, a message of folly for the Gentiles. But for those of us who are saved, who know Christ as our Lord and Savior and peace with God our Father, it is the power of God. So, first of all, all this, everything that can be mentioned pertaining to the gospel is from God. God hath before ordained. In other words, the lamb was chosen by God himself, the uh, lamb without blemish. In the Old Testament, you'll notice that offerings were necessary. They were temporary. They were pointing towards the... Um, the perfect offering that God himself was going to supply. And he did in his only begotten son. That holy offering, that holy one, our Lord Jesus Christ, he was without blemish. He uh, came to this world of ours, tried in all things in likeness with us, yet without sin, as we read in 1 Peter 2.22. We read in that same chapter, a couple of verses further down, that he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. So, we'll see that he became an offering. He became a sacrifice, the Lord Jesus Christ. The settlement has taken place. That's what the cross and the message of the cross is really all about. The settlement. In other words, the the true and holy and uh, consuming uh, fire, which God is a uh, consuming fire towards all sin, he has been uh, reconciled. He has been appeased. He has been satisfied with the offering that was done upon the cross of Calvary. Settlement has taken place. It is impossible for man to save himself. We fail totally and completely even by the law. We couldn't even keep the law. So, therefore, in due time, in, in the season that God himself chose, in the um, fullness of time, Scripture speaks of, uh, God sent his Son, and uh, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, we read here. I, I think that is just a, a beautiful expression. We can't put it any stronger. It couldn't be any clearer stated either. Where God reconciled the world unto himself. He created this world. He made this world. And world, the world lies in sin because of, of Lucifer deceiving mankind, 
uh, Adam and Eve and they fell into sin and because of them all men are, are sinners by nature and God himself in Christ Jesus steps in and takes and reconciles the world unto himself so here is where the gospel comes in God takes the initiative not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's why we have this broadcast. That's why we desire to share with you what we call the good news, or as Scripture speaks of the message of salvation as the good news. He did it all. He supplied the Lamb, and He, ma he was made to be sin who knew no sin. In Him, I become righteous in before God. So what we see in the message of the cross is that Satan was defeated. Principalities and powers were disarmed. There's a triumph that is over all these things as Christ triumphs over them on the cross. Christ did not call a legion of angels. Oh no, he did it all alone. Alone he was victorious. Alone he purchased mankind unto himself he has all power therefore and uh, therefore secondly I would like to mention all men are reconciled by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not saying everybody is saved oh no but the penalty for all men and the and the uh, sin of all men and women and children were placed upon Christ. He has reconciled all unto himself. He has reconciled the world unto himself, we read. He is an expiation for our sins, not only for ours, but for the sin of the world, we read in 1 John 2.2. 2. Christ came and died. Why? Because he had his delight in mankind we read in scripture he didn't want any to go lost he uh, died so that all men could be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth in Isaiah 53 4 and 5 he was willing to be wounded for our transgressions first Peter 2 24 by his wounds you have been healed you see that's where the gospel comes in being reconciled, Christ was forsaken by his Father. He was forsaken by God. Sin was not overlooked by God. It could not be. As I've already mentioned, he's a consuming fire towards sin. So here we have the, the mystery of Christ, if you will, the mystery of the gospel, where Christ, being God, being also the God-man, was forsaken by his father. Why? So that the captivated person, like you and me, to sin, could go free. Christ died for sinners. Yes, he died for the ungodly. Where God is in Christ, in other words, God dies for sinners. Yes, I think it's really wonderful as we have in, in one of our songs that are so beloved. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? What a depth of truth we have in just that one sentence in the song. How can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? where he himself laid down his life so that I could receive life eternal. Christ dies for, for man's sin. For as in Adam all sinned, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. Where God does not count our trespasses against us, we read here, in this portion of scripture why why because atonement has been made my sin has been paid for 
That's what the gospel law is all about. Where, where we have sin's forgiveness in Christ. Where this is by grace alone, through Christ. Or will you give heed to this message today? And to your convictions be true? There's danger and death in a further delay. My friend, he is now calling you. Oh, don't turn the Savior away. Oh, don't turn the Savior away. If you reach mansions in heaven oh don't turn the Savior away you have been listening to the Lutheran Gospel Hour Post Office Box 1-2 Pasadena, California Friends in Canada should write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. This is Pastor Arn Orheim inviting you to tune in again next week, same time, same station.